Welcome or welcome back. I'm the Ink Archivist, here today to talk to you about the three discontinued Iro Shizuku inks. And if you're wondering why I want to talk to you about these today, it's because they're still on the market, and I want you to be armed with the information you need. So the three discontinued inks were Suyukusa, Inaho, and Tsukushi. Pilot announced these three inks discontinuation from the Iro Shizuku line back in October of 2021, and their supply on the market has been dwindling ever since. In addition, some have seen a boom of popularity that they never saw during their ordinary run, making them harder and harder to find. So today I'll be going over everything you need to know, from why you might want these to where you might find them. And I'll leave more extensive resources in the description, so be sure to check those out for everything you'll need. Now to start with the question, why would you want these, a simple answer is, because it's Iro Shizuku. Not many people will dispute that this is one of the best quality bottles of ink that you can get on the market. Iro Shizuku means colors of the four seasons in Japanese, and Pilot has drawn inspirations from nature in determining this line's colors of inks. They come in these gorgeous, heavy glass bottomed bottles of inks with this very minimalist aesthetic that people find exceptionally appealing. Tsukushi means shoot of a field horsetail plant. It's a lovely medium brown that fears warmer and more medium in tone than Yamaguri, which is the remaining brown Irisuzuku ink. Next up is Suyakusa, which translates directly to dew herb, but is often translated as Asiatic day flower. Lastly, we have the ever popular Inaho, which means rice ear or rice head. Next, I'll be doing swabs of all three of these inks on four different papers. First is Tomoe River paper, second is HP32, a sort of souped up printer paper, then Rhodia, and lastly, Apica. Details for the 32 are in the description as always in case you want a better printer paper. We'll be starting up with Suyakusa, the blue color. When I thought of how to describe this ink, all I could think was dark powder blue. <laughs> Which I know it might not make a whole lot of sense, but it's kind of a medium blue, but with a softness to it. As I'll show you on the comparison swabs, a lot of inks that are close to this are far more electric in tone, which is probably more generally appealing, but I think for people who work in more of an office environment will appreciate this ink. It has a little bit of sheen on that Tomoe River paper, but besides that, it's quite a flat color, not a lot of shading or anything else of note. However, Irishizuku is well known for being well behaved across many papers with a good flow and a bit of wetness, and this is no exception. Next up, we have Tsukushi, the medium brown color. I'm honestly surprised that they discontinued this. Yamaguri, it seems like, is much more of a brown-black. I don't personally own that one, but it seems like these operate in completely different spaces. And I can definitely see a lot of people wanting a medium brown, which is very readable and arguably office appropriate in an Irishizuku ink. Now, on the Tomoe River paper, I actually got a bit of a copperish, almost greenish sheen out of this ink, which was pretty interesting. And again, kind of like the uh, Suyakusa, on the rest of these papers, it's quite flat without a lot of shading. It is a very rich and beautiful color, though. It does appear a little bit more chalky and less vibrant on the Apica paper. Those two don't seem to really get along very well. I have noticed that Apica sometimes diminishes the appearance of some inks. Lastly, we have Inaho. Inaho is now infamous for exploding in popularity since the discontinuation. I don't even feel like many people talked about it at all beforehand, but ever since it's been struck from the ledger, people have been clamoring for it, and I can see why. It's completely unique to the rest of the Irishizuku line, and even to inks more generally. It doesn't have sheening on the Tomoe River paper like the other two, but this ink does have a lot more shading, as you might suspect since it's a lighter color of ink. There is a slight green tone to it, which really excited me when I first started hearing people to whispering that it was kind of a pseudo olive green color. I picked up two of these bottles on AliExpress, and you can find the other two inks there as well. At first, I was a little bit worried about using AliExpress since it's, you know, basically eBay. <laughs> but everything that I've bought there, I've received a genuine article of. Just took about a month. 
Now I'll be moving on to notes I took with these inks so you can get a sense for the readability of each. Now I have Tsukushi on the left hand of this page and I have Suyakusa on the right hand. And I'd say Tsukushi is about an 8 out of 10 on readability. It's very dark. And Suyakusa is about a 7. Just one click down. Now on the next page I have two full pages of notes in the Inaho because I thought you probably needed a better sense of this ink in particular. I'd say people's mileage is probably going to vary on this ink. I didn't have a problem with it at all. I think it's quite readable, but some people need a very dark ink. Now I normally don't go over the drying times or waterproofness of fountain pen inks. I generally assume people think that it, they're not going to be very waterproof unless it's specifically stated that they have some sort of property like that, but I thought since I was doing a big ol' episode with three inks that I might as well. And please leave a comment if you do find this helpful, it'll help me going forward on whether or not I should be including sections like this in my videos. So Iro Suzuku is very well known for having a fast dry time, despite that wetness. So here I'm doing a 1 second, 5 second, 10 second, 15, and 20 second uh, dry test for this, and as you'll see, it's completely dry at 15 seconds on this Rhodia dot pad, which is really not bad at all. <laughs> so I really like that about these is, you know, despite being a wet ink, you still get very fast drying times. Now here I've just put some of that Inaho on the page and now I'm wetting it with a water brush to see how well it holds up to some water. Now the gold tones and the yellow is kind of lifted up in a way, but the blue-gray that's creating that kind of olive or green tone is remaining on the page beneath it. So decent. Now we'll be moving on to the writing samples of all three and their ink comparisons, and I'm starting out with Ina Ho. So you can see as I'm writing with it, when it's wet you can get that extremely slight green tone, and you can see it in the ink in the cap there. But you'll see when I compare it to Shiku Rin, it's nowhere like that. <laughs> it is a, a subtle, you know, background element to this color at best. Now I started that title with the Hokuro with a 2.0 stub nib, and then I'm doing the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog with the fine nib, and that will be the same across all three. And then when I move to the comparisons, I'll be using cotton swaps to lay down the colors of each of the inks, and then I'll be writing with that 2.0 stub nib hokuro. I was really surprised by Inaho. When I got um, two bottles of it, I thought, oh, surely I'll be getting rid of one of them and just selling it. I don't need both. But after trying this, I'll definitely be holding on to both of them since it's discontinued. It's honestly just nice to get a variety of colors of Iro Suzuku. I have quite a lot and I intend on getting them all at some point. So I'm always happy to add a bit more variety to my collection. So here comes Edna Shikurin. Shikurin is one of my favorite uh, colors of Iro Suzuku ink and I'd better like it because somehow I ended up with three bottles of it. Uh, that's a long story. but. <laughs> It is a nice um, yellow-green color. It's also a very unique ink. And then um, I have Tsukushi, the other discontinued brown. Unfortunately, this is a pretty sparse comparison because I have honestly nothing really that close to Inaho. I thought Diamine Yule Log from the Diamine 2022 ink vent calendar might be close, but... <laughs> It, it definitely was not. So again, I think that's why this really exploded in popularity, or part of it, is just because it's such a unique color, and it's such a unique color with such great properties. So here's a close-up of all of those. And then I'll move on to Tsuyakusa. Now, I'll be honest, when I got my hands on a bottle of Tsuyakusa, I originally thought, why would anyone want this one? Kanpeki and Tsukio are right there. <laughs> and they're, you know, much more popular inks. For a reason, I thought. But once I actually used Tsuyakusa, I honestly felt just 
very sad that it was <laughs> going in the Disney vault. I do think it's unique among Iris Suzuku's blues and that a lot of people would really like it, especially um, people who are worried about readability because it has that softness to it. It's very easy on the eyes. So I like it a great deal more than I expected to. But that being said, this definitely has the most replacements in inks. So if you don't catch this before it's gone, I don't think you'll be suffering too much for it because there are quite a few um, similar inks. And I'll be going over a lot of those, starting with Edelstein Topaz, which again is more of like an electric bright blue. Very beautiful color. Now I did want to talk about where all you can get these inks right now. And for the inks proper, the best place for all of them, especially Inaho, which you cannot find anywhere else, is AliExpress. Now, of course, use that site with your best judgment and at your own discretion. However, again, I was able to get everything that I wanted in a genuine article from that site. And it does seem like they have a good way of tracking the progress of your order and the seller doesn't receive a payment until you confirm receipt. So there is some protection to make sure that you get what you ordered and that you're happy with how things went. So I'll be leaving links in the description. Some retailers are still selling uh, Tsukushi and Suyakusa either in sample or full bottle. So I will be including resources for that, especially if you just wanna try those two inks at this time. And then I will be leaving the link for where I got one of my bottles of Inaho, so you can have a little bit more reassurance there. And then I found some other ones that I'll leave for you down there. But please do remember, these are going very fast and these were only available at the time of recording this video. So please don't get mad at me if you come to six months late and they're already gone because these are moving fast. Moving back to this color, you can see I laid down a lot of different inks and a lot of them are looking quite similar. Uh, Iro Suzuku Ajisai is far more of like a purpley color, it has like a slightly purple tune where uh, Suyakusa does not. And again, the other two on there, Kanpeki and Topaz are brighter. Blue Eel is not exceptionally close, it's darker. Lastly, I have Tsukushi here, which is the medium, slightly warm toned brown. Again, I think this is the one I'm most surprised that they ended up pulling from their line. I'm guessing Yamaguri was just more popular, which uh, surprises me, but I'll have to try that ink and figure out for myself why that might've been the case. I actually don't have that many brown inks so after the 2.0 title and the fine writing sample when I get to comparisons I just don't really have that much it honestly surprises me I really like brown inks but I find that I don't use or buy that many of them So after Tsukushi, I have Diamine Chocolate Brown, which doesn't have the same level of warmth and is slightly darker than Tsukushi. And then I have Diamine Yule Log from the Ink Vent Calendar. If you want a full review of this ink in particular, I do have one up on my channel. But obviously it has that kind of warmness, but it's much lighter than Tsukushi. It also has glitter in it, so that's a big difference. So there those are. 
And now we're gonna wrap this up. So here is a look of those three inks on the Tomoy River Paper Swab Sample. And if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing or liking or commenting so more people can see this video. I definitely don't want anyone to miss out on these. I'm really happy that I got a bottle and I'm sure many other people would be if they knew more about these. So thank you so much for joining me today and spending some of your time watching this. I hope you have a good one and I hope to catch you on the next episode. Bye.